Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Jerry. Today I'm going to do uh, our devotional by myself. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what Joy and I plan to do here for the next year or so. Uh, I spoke with her about that this morning, and uh, she actually has purchased a new devotional book, which she is going to be using for her devotions throughout the week. And I have decided to kind of get away from that type of program and on Sundays uh, kind of hold a Sunday school uh, rather than a devotional. So to help people try and understand their relationship with God and how this all, everything in the Word and everything works together for your benefit, basically, because your relationship with God hopefully will be improved. And I, in turn, will learn a lot more myself about my relationship with God. And what I would like also for you to do is as I go through these different areas in the Word, in your comments, uh, ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions about or comments about what I'm teaching or what I've said, whether you agree or disagree, I would like to know. So there'll be some back and forth between you and I, uh, and together we will hopefully learn a lot from this process, but that is the way I would like to do it, if possible, throughout the rest of this year. And so most of the information that I'm going to be coming to you comes out of a Kenneth Copeland reference Bible that Joy gave to me way back in, oh, I don't know, it's been 20 some odd years ago. And in the front of that Bible, it's a King James Version Bible, but in the front of that Bible, there is a whole lot of reference material that Kenneth goes over, and it just gives you a different perspective on what is in the Word. And then he listed scriptures and so forth to go along with that. And so, I will start today with that by talking about faith. Uh, faith is one of those things that should be pretty simple to understand, but a lot of people misunderstand faith. And uh, I assume a lot of people don't even know what that is. I don't know, most Christians do. but. It's simply, today we're going to talk about the force of faith because faith is an extremely powerful force. And it says in the scriptures, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so, first of all, the, the foundation scriptures for this is Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. That actually gives you a description of faith in the Word. And... Faith is not the product of reason, but it is the product of the recreated spirit. Uh, and by that I mean it is something that, oh, for example, when you pray about something, uh, and a lot of people pray about a lot of different things, but if you pray about something but you don't really in your heart believe that that's going to come to pass, you have doubts about that, then that faith is of no consequence, it's no good really. Because uh, in Hebrews uh, 11, one through three, it says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I'm going to relate that to uh, agriculture today, for example, a farmer, okay, a wheat farmer, for example, because my dad was a wheat farmer, but the first thing they do is 
they prepare the ground to be sown with the seed of wheat. And so the farmer plants the wheat in the ground and he has faith that sometime later that same year that that wheat is going to come up out of the ground and grow into a full head of wheat which has I don't know, maybe a hundred kernels of wheat in it, but he has faith that that's going to happen. And so that requires faith because when he plants that seed in the ground, within a day or two or three or whatever, there's nothing, you don't see anything. Okay, and that goes on for quite some time until the first little green sprout comes up out of the ground. And so there it is, faith is the substance of things hoped for because he hopes for a, a great harvest, but it's the evidence of things not seen. And that's in your heart, your own heart. So, for example, uh, if you're going to reason with the Lord, if you're going to communicate with the Lord, that communication must be on the Word and in the Word. In other words, uh, there's another scripture here. It's uh, Isaiah 1, 18. I'm going to read that to you here now. And in Isaiah 1, 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. In other words, reasoning with the Lord requires that you do that using the word. Anything that you want to accomplish through faith in God has to be based on God's word. It has to be, your prayers should all be sent up to God from his word. In other words, God said at one time, my word shall not return unto me void, but it shall go forth to accomplish that which I please. And it, his word, will prosper the thing whereto he sent it. So that tells you right there that if you want his word to be a reality in your life, and you have to pray his word back to him. And that requires faith, because in the word, most of the time that you pray about anything, it hasn't actually happened. If it had happened, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't be praying about it to begin with. You might be praying Thanksgiving for it, but it hadn't happened yet. So most of the prayers that you send up are actually prayers of faith. And so that faith requires you to believe in what you're praying, number one, and requires you to pray God's word back to him. Faith-filled words is what it takes, and those words need to come from God's word. The first uh, miracle that Jesus performed on this earth was changing well, he went to a wedding feast, and I'm going to read that to you also, too, here to give you some idea of what faith-filled words mean. And that is found in uh, John 1, 2, 1 through 10. This is in the second chapter of John, and it talks about the wedding feast that Jesus was at. And I will read this to you. It's John 1, or I mean John 2, verse 1 through were 1 through 10. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Now, first of all, his mother had faith that Jesus could do something about that, first of all. Uh, so his mother, right then in the next verse, verse 5, he says, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. 
Now right there she had faith that Jesus could do whatever it took to get the wine. Okay? And so in verse 6 it says, And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. I have no idea what a firkin is, but it's a volume of water, evidently. Uh, Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled him up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. They gave it to the, they gave it to the governor of the feast. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Now that, like I said, is a description of the faith the mother had in Jesus being able to do what he did. And then he, her having faith in him, actually did what she wanted him to do. So that is an example of that. Faith, you know, usually has to be developed in a Christian. I mean, you don't just, I mean, the first day that you're a born-again Christian, it just takes time for you to develop faith. You have to be obedient to God's Word, number one, and everybody, I mean everybody, slips and falls, falls back, comes back again. No one's perfect. Right after you're saved, I mean, you commit sins again. You just have to be obedient in confessing those sins and be forgiven. But faith is developed. In other words, faith is kind of like God testing you as to how much faith you have in Him. And like receiving the blessings of paying tithes, for example. Uh, it requires faith to write those checks to the church or to put money in the offering or whatever. It requires faith because Jesus promises you that there are returns for any of those things. Any of the promises of God that he has in the Word requires faith because you've got to do something first in order to reap the blessings of that. And finances is one of the more important things in a person's life, and to write checks to pay 10% of your income requires faith that you're going to receive the reward. And so that requires faith, and that pleases God. Uh, I think of Abraham and Isaac when God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, you know, and that took a lot of faith in God to take Isaac, go up to the mountain, put him on the altar, prepare all that stuff, and then almost kill him before God intervened and stopped him, or the angel of the Lord did. But that required faith, and God was just testing Abraham to see how much faith he actually had. But I firmly believe that Abraham knew from the very beginning that God was going to provide a lamb or ram or something. He did provide a ram. He's going to provide something for him so he wouldn't have to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. But he did it. He went all the way, almost, and he did it. And that pleased God very much because there was something that God had in store for him. And he had to know for a fact that Abraham was willing to do what he wanted him to do uh, in order to get whatever he wanted to get accomplished done. And uh, that took a lot of faith and God did with Abraham what he wanted him to do. And in your particular situations, it's the same thing. Uh, 
if you're obedient to the word, uh, you have to put the word first place in your life. You have to make it the final authority. And that, that you know, whatever promises are in the word, that requires faith. And but you have to put the word first. In other words, you can't doubt it. You have to truly believe it. And you show that you truly believe it by doing, being obedient to the Lord and then doing what he says to do in his word. And you will reap the benefits of that. And as you do that, for example, in healing, for example, if you pray the scriptures concerning healing and you do what the Lord, there's several instructions in the word about healing as to what to do to receive your healing. And if you go through those instructions and do what they say to do, you will be healed. But if you don't, you won't. Because if you don't, God detects that you really don't have, you're not really putting him first place in your life. And so he's not going to reward you with the blessings of that by healing you, basically. And because I've experienced that myself, I did everything in the word it said to do concerning healing of cancer. And lo and behold, I was healed of the cancer. And uh, it's the same with anything else. You just have to make the word the final authority, which means you have to meditate in the word. In other words, you have to read it on a daily basis or as often as you can. Uh, then you have to act on the word. And acting on the word is where it requires faith. It is astonishing to me that 15 to 20 percent of the people concerning tithing in a church is tithe. Because what that means to God is that they don't believe Him. And so they never usually prosper if they don't. Uh, faith, faith is a um, something that you, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So you have to either hear the word or read the word or something, and that will encourage your faith. And as you read all the examples in the word about the different people that exercised their faith, the rewards for them were very great. And the ones that didn't exercise their faith, whatever happened to them, either they died or something happened, you know. It's just like the children of Israel going from the desert into the promised land. They didn't have the faith to go into the promised land because they thought that they would be defeated there. So they didn't have any faith. So guess what God did? He sent them back out into the desert for 40 years. So all those people that didn't believe in him would be gone. That generation would die off. And so there is an example of not having enough faith to believe. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that today. Um, for the next few Sundays, I'll be talking about faith and different aspects of faith. So I'm going to cut it short there. And uh, like I said, as we go through this, I would like for you to comment as to what I said. Give me ideas, uh, something I may have missed or some idea that I may have skipped over or something. But in this process, it'll be you and I learning about the Word of God and uh, therefore benefiting from uh, these, not so much devotionals, but I call them Sunday school lessons because that's basically what they are. So anyway, I welcome your comments, good or bad, I would like to know. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Nobody agrees on everything that everybody uh, you know, wants them to agree on. So, so that's all I have to say today, and uh, have a blessed day, have a blessed week. And I'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.